Right, so we are for a cozy audience, uh, but uh, it's very important, and Sean is going to talk to us about documentation. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know if I should be behind or in front, but I'm going to be in front because that's what Christian did when he live demoed, and he's cool and I aspire to be him. So, um, so I've presented many, many times about Mallard, which is the uh, wonderfully dynamic uh, documentation format. There's really no other format that does quite what Mallard does, where you can just uh, plug pages in and the categorization kind of magically happens and all of the linking structure happens in all directions. Um, I happen to be a very big fan of Mallard. This is the website. Uh, Except this one's actually running on my, you see, local host that's running on my local machine. It's almost exactly like what's actually live on projectmallard.org right now, uh, except it has a search field that needs some uh, styling, but that's all right, because um, I'm going to show you new stuff with search. Um, it has the tweets here, yeah, so you should follow, hey, uh, you should follow at Project Mallard on Twitter. It's a very good account that posts things like the board out there where everybody loves their Mallard balls. Uh, and since I'm plugging Twitter accounts, you should also follow uh, at Jedi user stories. I love using user stories for documentation. Uh, as a role, I want to task so I can goal. Uh, so um, my first, you know, the first one on here, as a Sith Lord, I want to kill the Jedi so I can rule the galaxy. Or uh, as a Wookiee, I want to roar so I can roar. So follow that. Cool. All right. Um, so, Mallet is a nice format for writing documentation. Uh, I use Builder to write documentation. The projectmallard.org website is really a documentation website. It's just made up of Mallard documents for specifications and tutorials and stuff. So, you can see all of the Mallard page files in here. This is what a Mallard file looks like. It's XML. Uh, last year, I presented about duct type which is a lightweight format for um, for writing Mallard. Unlike any other lightweight formats out there, it's actually designed to do literally everything that you can do in Mallard XML. So um, in the same way that, say, the relax and G-compact syntax is completely round-trippable to relax in general, it is a, uh, it, it's not a watered-down Mallard. It is literally all of Mallard, including all of your extensions. Um, I'll show a little bit of it, but that's not that's what I did last year while I threw balls the whole time. So um, I'm going to talk to you about Pintail. Now, if you've been creating your documentation with Mallard, um, you would generally create the HTML to publish using something like Yelp Build, which is a fine little tool for taking a single document, um, creating a set of HTML files, and dropping them on the web and forgetting about it. Uh, it allows you to do some style customizations and stuff, but it's basically a fire and forget HTML generator uh, for Mallard and DocBook and some other stuff. Um, and that's okay, but how do you build up an actual large-scale documentation website uh, like what we have on help.gnome.org or like uh, what the Fedora project has currently? Um, you know, a, a large set of documents that are published, uh, continually republished. The translations are published. You want to have actual search. Um, so this is an area that we were kind of lacking, at least in having an ecosystem. We had tools that were doing this with Mallard, but um, no general purpose tools where I could just say, go use this. So that's Pentail. Um, and that's what I'm going to be showing today. So Pintail is a tool that will manage an entire website, uh, an entire documentation website. Uh, it, it uses Mallard as its base format. It's kind of the native format. Um, by extension, DuckType is also built directly in, so you can just use DuckType. Um, but it also can do other formats uh, through plugins that are really easy to write. So um, as it exists right now, you can use it uh, with DocBook or ASCII Doc. So you could use uh, Pentail to create an entire ASCII Doc documentation website. Um, so I'm going to show it a little bit. And in fact, I'll just show projectmallard.org um, because it's being built with Pentail right now. So, um, you know, there are some tutorials here. Uh, I love video, it's so fun. There are specifications down here. Here's the core specification. Yeah. 
There's conditional processing. That's one of our main extensions. So we build this entire website. It's all built from Mallard sources. And you can see all of those sources are here uh, inside of, uh, I'm showing them in Builder. You don't have to do use Builder. So, um, and the way Pentail works, it can scan an entire directory tree. It can figure out most stuff, uh, but you do have to give it some information. So it has a pretty simple configuration format. You just write a pentail.cfg file. Uh, and you can see here I'm pointing it to some customizations to make the styling work. Um, I'm telling it, um, I'm telling it I want to use this particular branch of the, uh, the XSLT because um, there's cool new stuff on there. Um, telling about the search provider. Um, and then on particular per directory basis, I can say, uh, you know, in the slash 1.0 directory, make sure you publish these extra files. Um, and you don't have to do that with all your files. If you have media files, graphics files that are actually referenced from within your pages, Pentail can find those automatically. So you don't need to list out all of your graphic assets. Uh, but sometimes you have some additional files that maybe you just link off to, and Pentail doesn't find those, so you have to tell about it. Um, but that's all. That's all it takes. Most of that stuff is a little bit of fluff. There's some extra stuff with search. Um, so that all builds. Actually, I'll just go ahead and prove it builds. So I'm going to run the command pintail build. That's all you have to do to build. I'm going to tell it dash V just so it, uh, it tells us what it's doing. Uh, I'm going to say dash dash no update. It, it talks to Git as it goes to update stuff. Um, and I'm dumb enough to do a live demo, but I'm not dumb enough to do a live demo that requires network access. So, <laughs> I'm going to tell it to just not update the Git repositories. I've already cloned the ones I need, so it doesn't need to clone them. Um, and then I'm going to do dash o slash var slash www slash html. I'm just going to build directly into my local web server uh, directory where it's being served out of. Um, if you're doing production building of websites, please do not write into it. Um, write somewhere else and then do an atomic uh, move over. That's a really terrible way to do a production website. But I'm not doing a production website, so I don't care. And uh, this will take about 30 seconds, so I'll just throw balls around. Oh, I won't even get them to anyone. <laughs> Is it done yet? Oh, all right. I'll just keep throwing balls. Wow, man. It's a good thing I don't play baseball. <laughs> All right, it's done. So, um, so just to prove that, yes, in fact, it worked. Here we go. This is the website, same page we were just looking at. All I did was rebuild the exact same files. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and search for something. Um, in conditionals, we have tokens. Um, so I'm just going to search for the word token. Uh, and we get some search results here. Um, and the really neat thing, one of the things that you really need when you do a documentation site is you want to have search on a particular document. So if you're, say, uh, if you're GNOME and you're publishing um, all of your documentation for all of your applications, when you're looking at the documentation for evolution and you do a search, you're you're intending as a user to search in the evolution documentation, not across all of help.gnome.org. So Pentail does that this way. So it, it, uh, it isolates your searches within particular documents. You have actually a whole lot of control over that. Um, if you notice in here, let's see, search domain. Uh, this one says self global self index colon parent. Um, gets a little technical, but you can basically, uh, you isolate things into particular search domains. And then you can also put things into additional search domains so that you can find maybe the main page of a, of a, uh, a particular piece of documentation from a global search um, while still restricting the search to within that document. So that's a really important feature that you typically don't get in site generators um, that is very important for actual documentation, being able to find the stuff that you're looking for in the documentation. So in this case, all of the research results we got are, if you can actually even see the, you know, the little thing there, it's, it's staying within that document. Um, I can click on one. There we go. Whatever. Um, but I might want to search the entire site. So I have that option here. I could say, ah, actually, show me results across the entire site. And there we go. We get some stuff from uh, some tutorials, some other pages. So we get a lot more results.
or I can just stay, you know, restricted within that document. Um, and the search system, the search is actually, uh, you can use, a, it's, it's pluggable for the backend, so you could create whatever search backends you want. Uh, but this backend, the only backend that exists right now is using Elasticsearch. Um, Elasticsearch is pretty awesome. Uh, it does really nice indexing and handles all the stemming and stuff for you so that you don't have to worry about you know, did I search for uh, searching or search or searched? It figures that stuff out. Um, and the really neat thing about Elasticsearch is that its API is actually just JSON over HTTP. So this search page that I'm doing here um, is not a CGI file. It's not, uh, there's no program running on my web server that's serving up this search page. Uh, so it is truly a static site. Everything generated is a static file. Uh, the search page itself just has a bunch of JavaScript in it, and it talks directly to the Elasticsearch server, um, which is a, a really nice feature that you don't actually have to run any CGI on your, um, on your static site. You just have to run an Elasticsearch engine, which is fun. Um, or you can pay someone to run it. So that's search. Now, I said, I'm just showing you Mallard so far. Uh, I said that this can do more than Mallard. I'm going to prove that. So I'm going to go ahead and enable some plugins here. I'm going to enable uh, the ASCII doc plugin, the doc book plugin, oh, and the Git plugin. So one of the cool things so far, what I've showed you, everything has been within the same uh, Git repository. Well, that's not how uh, you know, organizes this documentation. It's not how Fedora organizes this documentation. It's not how most and they've got a repository here with the document, a repository here with the document. So Pentail is actually able to go out to different Git repositories uh, and pull that content in. So I'm enabling the Git plugin, and then I'm going to go ahead and set some config for a directory here. So I'm actually going to pull the Fedora release notes directly into projectmallard.org, where they really belong, honestly. I don't see why not. So I'm saying, all right, I'm giving some config options for the, this directory name. Uh, and I'm telling it, here's your Git repository. Uh, I have to use a branch because um, Fedora's docs do weird things with entities that only public can understand. So this branch has some fixes for that uh, directory. Uh, and then I'm telling the doc book plugin at this point, this is the, the doc book file you're working with. And then I'm also giving some information for the search. So that's our doc book and our Git. And I'm going to go ahead and prove that ASCII doc works, so I'll just say my a doc dot a doc. Um, all right, okay, fine. I I made that file earlier and I deleted it, but apparently Builder remembers it. So this is an ASCII doc file. Uh, it Probnicates, just a word that I can use for search purposes. Uh, and I will show that duct type works and that duct type is awesome. Yeah, I know, Builder. All right, actually, I'll keep that, what it did. So here's an example duct type file. Uh, one of the neat things with duct type, it really does not limit what you can do. I don't know if it's useful to put a note inside of a table, inside of a list, inside of a note, but you can do that. I don't know any other lightweight format that allows you to actually uh, do that level of nesting. It's all indentation based. Um, and I love Bach beer. Looking for words I can search on. So I've added a duct type file. All I've done is add a file, um, add an ASCII doc file, and I've set up the stuff for uh, Git to go and pull out a doc book file. I'll go ahead and build. Everyone has mallard balls already, right? I just have 30 seconds to kill. Kids want more balls. Kids always want more balls. Ah. No? All right. So, building the HTML, 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 et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of files to build. It's marginally faster if you don't do dash V, because it doesn't have to print, but not really any. You saw the index. That's where it's, it's actually pushing stuff into the Elasticsearch index, right? Oh, and it, it did it, right? There's our doc book. So, I'll go back to project my own personal weird, projectmallard.org. Uh, Here's our example duct type file. 
All right, that just got built. All I did was add that file in. Uh, there's my ASCII doc file. If I search for Frobnicate, yes, our example came up. I search for Bach, right? Example doc type file, all of those came up. Um, and what was it? We were slash release notes, and I'll just give it index.html. And here we go with those just a couple of lines of configuration. We've actually pulled in the Fedora release notes to projectmallow.org. This is where they live now forever and ever. Um, and they're all built. So this is an actual, this is a doc book file. And I can click through here. It's all in here. You can read all about what's new in Fedora. And if I search, in this case, I, I restricted the search to the release notes. So I'm going to search for Anaconda. And we actually get search results within the release notes. So uh, all I did was point pen tail at where this documented is. Um, and it figured out how to build it. It figured out how to add it to the search index. Um, so that's everything it's doing right now. Uh, the, the big area of development right at the moment is getting translations working, uh, which is an area that's very important to me. I've worked on a lot of translation tools. Um, so I'm working on that right now. The difficulty with that is that you really have to abstract out a lot of things about the back end, where you're getting the translations from, um, how you're writing out your translated files, whether you're doing like Apache multi-views or separate top-level directories. So there's a lot of uh, configurations. Translations are tricky, uh, but I've worked with them a lot, and it will be in. Uh, so yes, this is a documentation that can handle all of your documents format uh, except the ones that it doesn't and uh, <laughs> um, I, I hope that you know we'll be able to move towards it um, and we are investigating it within the Fedora docs team and I'm really interested in anybody else it is written to be very general but it's not specific to any particular project that's it thanks Questions? So, um, so this is how search works, right? So how would you create like an index page, like a li list of links? Let's say index page with a link to release notes, a link to the ASCII doc document or the duck type document. How would you create that? Does it work similarly to how Mallard creates groups of links? Or? Uh, yes, yeah. so um, you can do, first of all, you can just write the links kind of statically the way you would in any language other than Mallard. You can just sit there and list out your links. Um, and you can do that whether you're using ASCII doc or if there was a markdown plugin or whatever else. Uh, Mallard, Mallard with the site extension for, uh, for whole websites has a links type called site subders. Actually, the new style of this is a colon and not a dash, but they both work. This will give you a really quick set of links basically to the next level deep. This could be extended a little bit to put in some depth information so that it can pick it up automatically. Uh, so currently, uh, currently kind of deep linking automatically in the, in the kind of Mallard fashion. Uh, it, it's not automatic. You do have to do it uh, statically, but that's a fairly easy thing to do because um, all of the information is, is there. Uh, all the information it uses to do all of the other automatic linking is there. So. So um, you mentioned that for GNOME, um, you would need to finish the translation support. Is there anything else that would block it for, say, something like help.gnome.org? Um, for help.gnome.org, I don't think anything else would block it. Um, doing Using it for the developer docs would be, be a different story, and I'm not necessarily even pushing that angle um, because of all the the tools that are used to build API references. But uh, help.gnome.org should be largely Mallard documents and maybe a few old docbook documents. Um, no, I think once the translations are hooked up, it, it should be just immediately usable. So we'll kidnap Fred tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else?
Anyone not have a ball? Jeez. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sean.